a school excursion gone wrong. I've rescued three of them. <laughs> On a day of distractions. Okay. Sort themselves out. A near fatal mistake. How do we miss that? And the wrong kind of beach party. Police discover a bomb on Bondi. Well, there's a bomb here. That's not mine, OK? That's not ours. It's not yours, but it's in the middle of your stuff. Bondi is a kilometre-long playground for all sorts of people and all sorts of games. What am I worried about? Dreams never matter to And keeping an ever-watchful eye, the playground monitors. The last couple of days has been uh, all about the water. Today's all a bit about what's going on on the sand. Saving lives comes first, but Bondi has its rules and regulations. No alcohol on the beach, no smoking, and no disruptive ball games. We've got a Sudanese troop. They're very talented. The problem is football games just getting a little out of hand. They're just starting to impact on the people trying to relax on the beach. They're just getting too big. A ball eventually hits a sunbaker and Kerbox hits the roof. Hey, that's it. No more. No more, mate. You've been told. That's it. Other people can enjoy the beach too, you know. No, mate, wrap it up. It's all happening. Then yet another distraction. Oh, if you like your phone, it's in the tower. Please come and get it. You are... Hey, look, what, what... It's going in the bin. Someone's handed us a phone and this person has rung it to try and find the phone and we're saying, come and get your phone. They're like, you're not a lifeguard, you're just a sleaze bag. Just put it back in the bag where you stole it from. It's like, well... We didn't steal it. Do you want your phone or not? It's just a little petty thing, but these are the things that tie us up and keep us off uh, the job that we uh, should be really doing. Then, a mother has lost something far more important. Where was? Where was he? Okay, just... What's he wearing? Yeah, Bondi Central. Uh, uh, relax. What's he wearing? Green clothes. Green turban as well. Yeah, he's missing. He's got a green turban on. A green turban? Yeah. OK. Five-year-old Harshal is somewhere in Bondi's crowd of 30,000. Where was he last seen? Oh, there. How old is he? He's nearly six. Uh, he's nearly six, so he's pretty young. I'm just going to go for a drive on this buggy. Yeah. And if I find him, I'll radio for him and bring him up, OK? Trainee Jesse trawls the beach. Harry searches the promenade. Yeah. Where, whereabouts are you, Sydney? Whereabouts exactly? Where should I look? There is a yellow boat. Yeah. N near to that one. Okay. What, in the water? Yeah, he was in the that water. That far out in the water? Yeah. The group that lost a mobile phone are about to get more than they bargained for. You gonna apologise for being a nine ball? That was really rude. We're Corey accepts back. none of the girls made the call, but he's sending a message to whoever did. Who was on the phone? I didn't call you. That wasn't me. Yeah, well, that was disgusting behaviour. So I'm trying to give you something back. It wasn't And you want to be like that. It was not me. Get your phone. Don't lose it again. Then, a new distraction in the middle of the beach. Beachgoers are becoming increasingly irritated by the stage show on the sand. Then the performance goes one step too far. They started all getting their clothes off and running around in front of kids naked. While topless bathing is tolerated on Bondi, strip shows aren't. It's just the lifeguards from down at uh, Bondi. How are you? Corey calls police. Are they just um, naked and being rat bags on the beach? I think they're going to be punted by the police very soon. Meanwhile, the hunt continues for five-year-old Harshal. I'll let Harry's go to the promenade and I'll go along the shoreline. Hey, mate. I'll uh, make me and Ace are still here on the bridle. It's now been half an hour since the mother last saw her son. Then, a report from North End. Uh, yeah, central to Jess. Just got another. Yeah, go ahead, Corey. I think someone's dropped the kid to um, one of 
Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Just it's okay. Oh no, it's okay. Just no, no, no. Just tell me, he is okay. Yeah. The boy is okay. Yeah, we're just trying to find him. Okay, just sit he, he, and relax. You don't find him. Sit. Still not. The, someone's with him, but we've just got to try and find that person. Okay. But when lifeguards get there, they discover the information was wrong. The boy's distraught father arrives. Can you slow down and calm down? Can you calm down? A call from someone on the beach. We have been left the beds. You are over there? I, I'll, I'll just come. Thank you so nice of you. I'm just coming. I'm just coming. Please, I'll got your number. I'll just come in five minutes. Ask him to calm down. Corey confirms the details. All right. So he's, he's on the sand, yeah? Is he coming? He's safe. He's coming. He's being found. Harry's, the, a, the girl just rang and she's sitting with the kid on the sand and um, she said they're pretty much in front of the North Bondi Italian. Jesse searches the reported location at North End. Harshal's green turban should stand out, but he's sheltering under a towel. Finally, after 40 minutes of angst. Well, after all that, uh, the kid was near the clothes down North Bondi. Uh, there's a, just a member of the public just uh, holding him, and yeah, another, another positive result. He's all good. Thanks a lot. That's okay. It's all good. To see him again, it's very happy. Yeah. The rest of the beach is oblivious to the drama. One group especially. Police respond to the lifeguard's report. Today, it's all in the family. Cousin Oliver, excuse me, cousin. Yeah, it's good. I haven't seen my cousin for a while, so he's a very, very nice guy, I guess, once we do the wrong things. <laughs> this job is a nudity complaint. But Corey's cousin stumbles across something far more serious. Oh, there's a bomb here. That's not mine. That's not ours. It's not yours, but it's in the middle of your stuff. Back here. The beach party has entered a cone of silence. Who owns the bag? You speak English? Who owns this bag here? Well, whose bag is it? I don't know. I just told you it's on my bag. You're going to smart, are you? How would I know whose bag it is? So um, you don't this bag. I actually put my stuff in. What's your name? So your stuff's in here, but you don't own it? No. So you're going to tell me who owns the bag? I don't know who owns it. We had hits of random friends. What is it? Came to the party. What's your name? So you put your belongings in someone's random bag and you don't know who owns because it? Because I don't have a bag, so I just put my cigarettes in there so they don't get oh, okay. A girl who a short time ago was dancing wildly now appears to have fallen asleep. Others in the group keep their distance. Well, there's a bomb here. That's not mine, OK? I think my friend had gone for a swap. OK, have you got any identification on you? I don't. Police confiscate the bong and issue the group a formal order to leave the beach. Well, the guy in the orange shorts and the guy in the white shirt, those two guys that we were speaking to, yeah. they've been given a move on for six hours from Bondi Beach. OK. They've been told if they come back in six hours, they could be arrested. Yeah, cool. Face a fine, so if they do come back, just let us know. Tell you what, just get, take a deep breath and oh, it's off again. <laughs> Oh, and I thought today was going to be a little bit sort of... See, every day's different here. It's so, so amazing. Hopefully for the afternoon, boys, they'll have a quiet afternoon. But Bondi never lets up. The Sudley's here. There is a God. As the afternoon shift begins, the onshore wind picks up. It throws the uh, balance back in our favour. What it does is it becomes nearly impossible to sit on the beach when the Sudley comes through, so they've got to just go from wherever they uh, have emanated from. There's an umbrella. The wind brings other dangers. It's wrapped all around me. It's hurting more and more. 
Maxie attends a backpacker stung in a very tender place. It's like a string, a, a yeah, stinger. Yeah, a string. It was so in gone. between. Yeah. And I had to put it away. Use a spray. So it's very, not very often you get girl come. So, <laughs> excuse me. No. <laughs> they want to be at the front. Any on the front? Um, front? No, really, just. Just like behind. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. So when it goes away, it's a. Huh? It'll go away. Yeah. Okay. You'll be right. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. We've had hundreds of blue bottle stings today. But that's about all I can do yeah, for you, man. That's all right. You'll be you'll live. Lifeguards are inundated as more and more victims seek assistance. She's in a bad way. Their eyes are momentarily off the water when a boy sprints from South End. Luke and Terry race down. Maxie backs up with a defibrillator. The lifeguards have no idea what's happened. Wait, what's, what's going on? What the f is going on? We're already on the shoreline. How do we miss that? Who's with this girl? Well, I'm on her mother. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't get out too. They were told to stay here. <laughs> Maxie monitors her pulse. <laughs> the girl is in shock and may have taken in water. Yeah. Young Lydia here has gone for a swim. She's down here with nine other kids. Is that right? <laughs> and she's got caught in this southern rip here. And like that, she's not almost drowned. My daughter was swimming with her cousins, all teenagers, told to stay here, don't listen. She got washed out further. Bring him up to speed. I'd like to get an ambulance to check her out. In the tower, lifeguards prioritise who to treat. Mate, can you just go away? We've just got someone drowning. We've been stung by a blue bottle. Yeah, just have a shower. There's nothing you can really do about it. Missing a rescue could prove fatal. <laughs> Luckily, former lifeguard George was surfing nearby. Yeah, no, as well as we're now, I thought it was a resource for sure. She, the way she no, walked, she's, you know. Because I said, she was really panicked. Yeah. I said, you're all right, darling. Got gotcha, you, you're OK. And How far out were you? Were? She, but when I picked her up, just, just in a little rip on there behind here, right? End rock. Lydia and her family come from Sydney's west. Living 50 kilometres from the coast, they rarely come to the beach. You've got 10 kids here. Yeah, because we've got, we've got, we've got my, their, nef, their nieces and that too. <laughs> They're all over. <laughs> all right, yeah. This end of the beach is it's a surfing end and it's also littered with rips. <laughs> we found out the hard way why, why we want people to swim in the flags. Yes. Okay. Sure, right? Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you saved a life, mate. Very lucky. Yeah, cheers, mate. All the best, though. Thank you. It's our job. It's not a good feeling. I'm not even stoked about it. Lydia, she's an ambulance. We usually, we pride ourselves on what we see, and you know, when you kind of miss something, you kind of feel shit out. Blood out, you know, it's, uh, I've never actually been here, you know, when something's happened like that. That was um, pretty close to um, drowning as I'd like to get. And if it wasn't for the surfer, I, I, I'd hate to think how that might have ended up. So, um, yeah, a big thank you to the board riders at Bondi for, for, uh, for that assist. After a night of observation, Lydia was discharged from hospital. Next day, Bondi's back to normal. Lifeguards prepare for rush hour. It is dangerous today. We've got a nor'east swell running, so it's intensifying in this southern corner of Bondi. Bondi attracts tourists from across the globe. 
Today, 40 school kids from inland China have landed on very foreign soil. It's their first time at the beach. That, that group of um, Asian tourists, well, no, they came down. They walked straight down from where they're sitting into that drip. There's a rip here. I need everyone out of the water right now. The message isn't getting through. In no time, there's trouble. Come in, Dino. Find our central to Dino. Got two young Asian-looking kids drifting out on a bodyboard together, mate. They're both on the board, staying on the board, but um, they won't be able to get back in, buddy. They're really panicking now, eh? As Dino heads out, a flimsy boogie board is all that saves them from drowning. Even sitting on a surfboard is a foreign experience. Then a second attempt. Oh, they're off again. They just went off again. Sometimes there's little sympathy from the tower. I wonder what Dino's saying. <laughs> Third time lucky. Now they crack their first ever wave. I got him in. It was just getting them on the board was the problem. The paddle itself was no problem. It was just the communication, and they, they were pretty panicky. I did notice one of the young boys had Superman underpants on. Superman was never a strong swimmer, he only could fly. The group from China has now spread out across two rips. That rip just started to flare up over here. Yeah, yeah, the rip's rip. definitely going nuts. There's another one here. Is this one of your friends being rescued now? Then yet another boy is dragged out. Frustrated, Dino wants some help from their teachers. Are you with these kids? No, no, they're no. my students. Yeah, they can't be in the water. Can you tell them? No swimming here. So be here. No. See the red and yellow flags? Who's that? Who's that? Yeah. It's a life and death message that's not getting through. So the kids, they cannot go in the water here, OK? I've rescued three of them. To the red and yellow flags. See the red and yellow flags? Oh, it's, it's hard when we get so many tourists, especially Asian. Okay, they, and they have no idea what we're saying, and we have no idea what they're saying, so Dean might struggle. Yeah, I'll leave this one for you, yeah, they're trying to. Maxi suggests a solution a translation app on his smartphone. <laughs> No one reacts. Perhaps the visitors are having trouble taking orders from a recorded voice. Maxi resorts to an age-old communication strategy, pointing. Down there, flags. Yeah, dangerous current, OK? Very, 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 very dangerous. You know, I don't pull them out often, the, the drawing of the sand, but uh, they speak a little bit of English, which is good. But Maxie wants one more crack at finding a translator, this time with some authority. Uh, yeah, just whatever he said, move the red, red and yellow flag please. Success at last. I reckon the game now, get, trying to find one in the group that speaks a bit of English to understand, to say what you want them to say and get them to say it over the megaphone. Not done yet, Maxie wants to send the group a personal message. He finds a boy with a smattering of English.